I'm here to announce that I will be recommending to the Governor-General that a Royal Commission be appointed to inquire into institutional responses to instances of al and allegations of child abuse in Australia. It says the church does not take responsibility for the conduct of its priests. There is no vicarious liability. This afternoon, the Premier announced a special commission of inquiry into the matter. Peter Fox has come forward with allegations. Uh, they deserve to be tested uh, and Margaret Keneen is the right person to do it. For the victims, it's bittersweet. Thinking, are we ever going to make this happen? And then to finally hear it, it was just an incredible moment. Peter Gogarty was abused as a young boy by notorious pedophile priest Jim Fletcher. The institutions that have let this happen to innocent kids are now being go uh, you know, going to be asked to explain themselves. How did they let that happen? Louis Perona's son John took his own life in July. He'd been grappling with the pain of being abused by a hunter priest in the 1970s. People who cover up sexual crimes, sexual abuse of crimes, don't seem to think it's serious. Well, they're wrong. They're about to find out that they're very wrong. A historic day for Peter Fox and victims of child abuse. It's uh, been a long time coming. It's been six months, so uh, we're well and truly ready now, of course. The Detective Chief Inspector was the first witness to appear at the Special Commission of Inquiry following his explosive allegations last year. It's all about uh, getting to the truth and that's what the Commission's all about. The next two weeks will focus on the circumstances leading to why the then Commander Max Mitchell directed Peter Fox to cease investigations into alleged child sexual abuse in the Catholic Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle, involving Father Dennis McAlinden and Father James Fletcher and an alleged pedophile ring with in the church. Detective Chief Inspector Fox perceives that he was removed from any investigative role relating to child sexual abuse matters within the Catholic Church. The inquiry resumed today investigating how police handled complaints of child sex abuse within the Maitland Newcastle Diocese. Newcastle Herald journalist Joanne McCarthy was called as a witness. I'm glad that uh, she's at long last now being able to, uh, to give uh, her version of events. Ms McCarthy had been in close contact with victims and police whistleblower Peter Fox and told the Commission he was pretty keen. Others weren't so keen. She was also angered by the treatment of one victim and admitted that she wasn't wholeheartedly buying into the police investigation. Ms McCarthy added a senior officer contacted her to say that prosecution wasn't the way to go with historical matters and that truth and reconciliation was appropriate. We're doing this on the back of a Victorian parliamentary inquiry that I think has really exposed to the Australian public the very real differences between what the Catholic Church has said in the past about how it deals with these matters and what it actually has done um, behind the scenes. It's an apology and an admission many victims thought they'd never hear. I wish to make an unreserved apology on behalf of the diocese to all those who have suffered as a result of acts or omissions of members of this diocese in relation to matters before this special commission of inquiry. We expect that the evidence gathered by this inquiry will show that the Maitland Newcastle Diocese as an institution had extensive knowledge dating back to the 1950s of the serious risk posed to children by McAlinden. Michael Malone slipped into the Special Commission this morning for his first day of evidence, avoiding the media throng gathered outside. He took to the stand shortly after lunch and began giving his recollection of events around the time Bishop Leo Clark resigned and he was appointed head of the diocese in mid-1995. 
Under questioning from council assisting Julia Lonergan, Bishop Malone said Bishop Clark's resignation and his subsequent elevation came as a complete shock, adding that he had expected a more solid handover so he could be briefed on any secret documents on priests that he presumed existed. Bishop Malone told the commission that the handover lasted a matter of minutes and then the outgoing leader left like a rocket. But not before pointing out a large briefcase in the corner of his office containing what later emerged as documents outlining abuse allegations against pedophile priest Dennis McElinden. Bishop Malone told the commission that when he asked Bishop Clark what was inside, he responded with, oh well, you'll find out. He said that he also pressed his predecessor on whether there were any skeletons in the closet. Father Brian Lucas faced a second day of questioning about his dealings with pedophile priest Dennis McElinden and others, mainly in the 1990s. At the time, Father Lucas was part of a special committee charged with dealing with various issues relating to Catholic priests, including child sex abuse claims. He told the inquiry efforts were made to remove suspected pedophiles from active ministry, saying if he's willing to resign, that's a good outcome. However, he conceded it is a problem when he disobeys that direction. Council assisting Julia Lonergan pressed Father Lucas on why police weren't notified of criminal accusations against clergy members. He told the commission he didn't go to police because he didn't want to betray victims. I never felt able to do that, he said, because victims didn't want to go to police. Father Lucas later admitted that the church processes for handling abuse complaints were, in hindsight, perhaps erroneous, adding it may have been better to force victims to go to authorities. Documents previously tendered to the commission indicated Dennis McElinden made admissions of his crimes to Father Lucas. However, he now says he can't recall that, although he accepts it may have happened. Outside the commission, she concluded... It surprised me through this whole inquiry. Um, clergy and other witnesses are having tr trouble trying to remember. And I can tell you for sure that victims have a lot of trouble trying to forget. It was an inquiry that uncovered a silent evil. For Peter Gogarty, this premises is where the torment occurred. Yesterday's findings from the Special Commission of Inquiry into how police and the Catholic Church handled complaints of child sexual abuse in the Hunter provided a sense of satisfaction. People in high places in the Catholic Church, particularly in this diocese, certainly knew ab about the activities of Dennis McAlinden and James Fletcher for a long, long time. Three of the four volumes of the report were made public with the other remaining confidential and it's believed criminal charges could be laid against a senior church official as a result. The explosive findings were a tough read for the Catholic Church. For me and others in this diocese, it is a bitter experience to read the report. The Special Commission of Inquiry brought into question the inactions of up to six senior members of the Maitland Newcastle Diocese for failing to report child sexual abuse. It's believed one senior church official could face possible prosecution. The Royal Commission arrives in Newcastle tomorrow where the evidence it will hear is expected to be confronting to say the least. I think it will be a shock for the broader community about you know, what they will learn, uh, but certainly for people who've been directly affected, uh, people who've already come forward, their wounds will be reopened. The hearings will determine whether there was a culture within the diocese which enabled abuse to flourish. It is anticipated that there will be evidence that on various occasions over the years, officials within the diocese were made aware of suspicions that Rushton and Brown were sexually abusing boys. He's one of Australia's most senior Anglicans. The Archbishop of Perth, Roger Herft, today admitting he failed to act on allegations against notorious pedophile priest Peter Rushton. Did you drop the ball with Peter Rushton? When I look back on, on what has happened, I've asked myself a number of times, why was I not more alert? Why weren't the people around me more alert? I struggle to find an answer for that, but I agree with you that at that particular point of time, I should have acted more effectively and well, and I did not. 42 years of emotion laid bare. Today, Jared McDonald stood defiant after addressing the Royal Commission. Does this help you move forward? Oh, look at the smile on my face, darling. Bishop Wright told the Commission that he believes more focus should be on current issues within the diocese as opposed to revisiting child sex abuse cases.
from decades ago. It sometimes seems that so many of the case studies are delving into matters of 30 and 40 years ago, uh, and I, I kind of wonder where the more contemporary uh, spotlight should be falling. Well, one of the issues there, Bishop, I'm sure you understand, is it takes people many, many years before they come and tell anyone yeah. that they've had a problem. At 90 years of age, Audrey Nash is still struggling with the pain caused by child sexual abuse. About six months after the Bar Beach accident on October the 8th, 1974, Andrew took his own knife in his bedroom. He was 13. Ms Nash's son Andrew was a student at Morris Brothers in Hamilton. He had visited the beach, which it since been revealed was a regular haunt of convicted pedophile Brother Romuald. I now believe that Andrew was sexually abused and that he took his own life because of it. Earlier, Brother Michael Hill spoke of Brother Dominic and the complaints made against him by former students at Morris Brothers at Hamilton. What was the nature of the complaints? I'm not aware. Uh, inappropriate behaviour, but there were no more details than that. Did, Did you, you ask him? Is no, there any more details? No. Um, when you're concerned to know? Absolutely. Meanwhile, Commissioner Peter McClellan acknowledged the media's role in sparking the inquiry, particularly the Newcastle Herald's Joanne McCarthy. Without those efforts, it's unlikely that this Royal Commission would have taken place. The Cathedral Board has now taken over responsibility from the Parish Council following its sacking amid revelations in the Royal Commission. Despite the internal turmoil, the Anglican Diocese maintains there is still confidence within the church. The, um, Forgetful and at times uncomfortable. Are you getting irritated with me, Mr. No, Lawrence? I'm not getting irritated with you. Former priest Graham Lawrence giving evidence at the Royal Commission denying he protected pedophile priests during his time as Dean of Newcastle Cathedral. Is it right or is it wrong that you were a go-to person in the diocese for <laughs> priests who were accused of child sexual abuse? That is wrong. Lawrence was stripped of his holy orders in 2012 after allegations of child sex abuse were levelled against him, as well as claims he was part of a gang of three within the diocese, which kept allegations of child sex abuse secret. Claims he denies. After 16 days of hearings, current Bishop Greg Thompson, himself an abuse survivor, had his chance to give evidence. It's the case that there has been a very significant problem with child sexual abuse in the Diocese of Newcastle. Systemic over many decades. It's taken almost three years. Australia's most senior Catholic cleric accused of covering up child sexual abuse finally on trial. Are you looking forward to having your time in court? Archbishop of Adelaide, Philip Wilson, appearing in court for the first time since being charged in March 2015. Forced to brave the media gauntlet in Newcastle. Archbishop, how are you feeling? His trial was set to begin last week, but his legal team argued he was suffering from Alzheimer's and wasn't mentally fit. But a neuropsychologist ruled otherwise. Wilson stands accused of failing to report the sexual assault of a boy by pedophile priest James Fletcher in the 1970s in the Hunter Valley. But moments later, Archbishop of Adelaide, Philip Wilson, emerged a convicted criminal. How are you feeling after being found guilty? The 67-year-old remained silent, just like he did back in 1976, when he was told by then altar boy Peter Cray of the abuse he'd suffered at the hands of convicted pedophile priest James Fletcher in the Hunter Valley. It's a very, very significant day. In his ruling, Magistrate Stone found that in 1971, Fletcher indecently assaulted the then 11-year-old Cray and in 1976, he did in fact tell the Archbishop of the abuse, but between 2014 and 2016, Wilson failed to tell police. Do you still stand by your version of events? The magistrate ruled Wilson remembered what he'd been told. He must have believed it, but wanted to protect the church and its image. What's the message to come from this, do you think? Look, I think it's a... They should all be made accountable, those that had the knowledge and, and, and didn't do a thing.
I call the Prime Minister. I move that the House apologise to the victims and survivors of institutional child sexual abuse. Mr Speaker, silenced voices, muffled cries in the darkness, unacknowledged tears, the tyranny of invisible suffering, the never heard pleas of tortured souls bewildered by an indifference to the unthinkable theft of their innocence. Today, Australia confronts a trauma, an abomination, hiding in plain sight for far too long. 